So to be totally honest with you, um, it, it's been a bit of a, it, it forced me in a reflection that I didn't really want to have. I, I stopped rugby in June 2019 and ever since I've been flat out at just doing other things, trying to keep myself busy and I never pressed pause on any of what I've done, just to reflect, take a second, you know, to know what you've done, just to you know where you are, where your head is at and stuff like that. And, and, and I've been wondering if, if that was the right strategy or, or at least I'm telling myself that in the next couple of weeks, I need to, or months, whatever, I need to do that at some point because I ch- chat a lot to my dad and stuff. We're just thinking about the fact that, yeah, you, you got to, it's, it's a big change. You know, it's a big change. You, you were used to doing crazy things. We're, we're a bit crazy animals, you know, the rugby players. We've got some anger inside us that we need to get out at some point, somehow, some way. And it just got me thinking because I was speaking to all those guys from Stad, you know, but think about this guy, this guy. We're talking about Domi a lot because he had fire inside him. He was an incredibly charismatic, warm, dynamic. He just had the light on him. You know, when somebody walks in a room and all you wanted to do is listen to him, he would never be the most serious, but wow, he was entertaining, nice. Uh, so Hask knew him as a coach. So obviously, they had a different relationship. But imagine I started in 2003, 2004 at Stad. I was 18, 19. He was already a legend and he was absolutely brilliant. So he would never talk to me when things were going well but he would talk to me when things were going bad. And he would be the type of guy, he's like, just sit next to me, mate. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Come, come with daddy, you know? Just sit, sit on my lap. I'll, I'll take you. And, and then he would convince us, basically, that we were capable of doing anything. He was scared of no one, nothing, never. Nothing was too big, too shiny, or too impossible to get. And he drove that mentality into all of us. So the reason why I tell you that is, is pushing me into that introspection, sort of, um, is because I... Because I really feel that that crazy, crazy, incredible, wonderful, whatever personality that he had, which applied so well to professional sport and to a contact professional sport, is what drove him to the ground afterwards because he he just filled the cracks and the void left by the lack of competition and the, the things that you will never be able to reproduce reproduce completely you know the five minutes before a game when you want to puke the five minutes after a game when you're crazy on a high happy this you, you know you got to move on and he just filled those gaps there's this gap and those cracks with with shit to be fair and that's what that's what caused him to go so I, w- I will try to 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 i will always remember him as somebody who just helped me he's one of those blokes you know they, they he gave me a hand i didn't have boots he called the nike guy the next day i had a contract for three years i tried to give wow. him a bottle of wine to say thank you he threw the bottle of wine in my face. He said, never again. He never wanted anything back, but he would just give a lot. He never gave me any piece of opinion about my throwing, about my playing, about whatever it was. But like I would be, you know, in playing those mind games with myself about, uh, not playing those mind games, but fighting with my mind to get better at throwing. He would just be the guy, you know, ne- be next to you. Oh, stop a pair on you, pussy. You know, it's, it, that's, that's the type of guy that he was. Yeah, he, he was just an incredible player. But imagine the same person that you see on the field, off the field. He was that nice, kind, charismatic, could, could, could go through a mountain and, and everybody would follow him because, uh, because you would want to. So he's going to live a huge void. I've got a huge, a lot, of, all of, a lot of thoughts with his two girls and, and his family. They, they're leaving behind uh, somebody so, so precious that should, should, that should have not left this, this young and this early. So I think it's down to us now to say, I'm going to work on myself to try to learn and, you know, try to go. But I think it's also down to all of us to think that if we're brothers on the field, we need to be brothers off the field. It's, it's one thing to say, Hask, how you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. But us men, we need to strap a pair on and actually go, go further than that. You know, I actually care for each other. Actually know that we all have things that we, we, we have to deal with. Shit happens to anyone all the time. That post rugby is a, is a tough one. That you need, you, you need to tackle it. And that's, because I never want to experience that again.